Utilization is on design of a strip routing having a uniformly distributed load over its length. In this example, we are going to calculate the bending moment and shear forces. And we are going to calculate the reinforcement area. In addition, we are going to check the shear capacity of a footing. With this lesson, we are going to cover all the areas of design of strip footing of this nature. Let's start. In this example, as you can see here in the figure, a strip footing having a long length is considered with the uniform distribution. In this, we have considered one meter strip for these calculations. As you can see there, we have considered SLS load that is serviceability limit straight load as 150 kN per meter length and ultimate trim straight load as 225 kN per meter. Allowable bearing capacity is 125 and the characteristic strength of the concrete is 25 N mm square. Uh, yield strength of the reinforcement 400 N per mm square. In these kind of situations, we don't have a bending moment in the longitudinal direction because we have a uniformly distributed load. There is no varying load in this direction. So therefore, there won't be any bending moment uh, unless there is no change in the ground condition. There won't be any bending moment in this direction. We are going to design for the transverse direction reinforcement. As you can see here in the figure, we, we have a 1 meter length. We have considered first, we have to calculate the width of the footing. For that, now let's see what's the width of the footing. Now, its footing will be like this. We have a certain length of the footing, but we don't know the width of the footing. This width we have to first calculate. Right? Other direction, we are going to consider a 1 meter length. Now, the from the principle stress is equal to force divided by area from this we can get area is equal if divided by stress from this we can find the width width into length equal if divided by stress here length is one meter right from this we can calculate the stress now we know the force ultimately SLS force is 150 kN per meter squared, allowable bearing capacity 125. From this, we get 1.2 meters. Now, we know the width of the footing. Then we have to design for the bending. Let's calculate the bending of the footing. Before that, we need the ultimate pressure under the footings. Now, we know the ultimate load. Ultimate load is that is 2 to 5 from the design data. We know the width of the footing. 1.2 into 1 meter strip we are going to consider. This becomes 187.5 kN per meter square. Now let's calculate the bending moment under the footing. This is our footing. We are going to calculate the bending moment at the face of this support. This becomes 500 because let's say width of the load or width of the wall is 200 then this become 500 then we can calculate the moment at the face moment is equal 187.5 into 0.5 is the uh, load then it's increase it's had multiplied by the distance by 2 this become 0.5 squared over 2 then this become 23.5 kN meter right now let's assume a thickness for the footing okay thickness say 250 millimeter cover depending on the durability requirement you have to consider the cover in this example let's see let's consider it as a 50 millimeter and let's, let's say we are using 10, 10 millimeter bars Right. Then we can calculate the effective depth. Effective depth is equal to 250 minus cover 50 minus bar diameter divided by 2. This becomes 195 millimeter. So we know the effective depth. From this we can calculate the reinforcement area. We know the M. Now we can calculate the AS. 
right this from the equations by solving the equation you can obtain this value we are not going to go for the derivations of this equations and let's see it says a 284 millimeter square from equation we have to calculate now the up to the bending moment i think you can follow the same depending on your code you have to use that bending moment to calculate the reinforcement area right now we know the bending moment now let's design for the shear shear we have three things to consider uh, first one is the vertical line shear second thing is the punch in shear now all those we have to check during a design of footing for the vertical line shear we consider a d distance from the face of the support right so now our footing will be like this now d distance now we know the distance now we know the d right this is d195 then this value becomes 305 because total this width will be 500 now let's see the shear stress first we calculate shear force 187.5 into 0 0.305 right into 1 this becomes 57.5 kilonewton and we want to calculate the shear stress we divide by bd we we already know 57.5 into 10 to the power 3 divided by d say 1 meter length d195 from this we get the shear stress as 0.293 newtons per millimeter square now from the equation so from the code we have to calculate the shear capacity in this example we are not going to the calculation of the shear capacity that is obtained as 487 newtons per millimeter square now vc is greater than v therefore no shear links are required and the shear check is satisfied that is vertical line shear is okay now we have to check the punch in shear how to calculate the punch in shear? Basically, in this kind of a thing, example, you it could be adequate for going with the punch in shear check at the face of the column. Let's calculate the punch in shear at the face of the column. Now, from that, from the loads, you know, face of the column shear we can calculate as 187.5 distance is 0.5 meter into 1. From that, we can get the Punch in shear force as 93.75 kilonewton. From this, we can calculate the shear stress. Shear stress can be calculated as 93.75 into the 10 to the power 3 divided by B1000 D195. This value becomes 0 0.48. 0 0.48 newtons per millimeter square right we have to calculate the punch in shear capacity according to the british standard according to the british standards punch in shear capacity can be considered as 0.8 fcu or 5 newtons per millimeter square whichever lesser we have to consider in this example fcu is 25 that this value become 4 newtons per millimeter square then the this value should be 4 newton per millimeter so our capacity force is about 0 0.48 therefore there is no issue with the punch in shear therefore 14 is okay right with that we end the today lesson on design extra footing with uniformly distributed load there are another types of strip proteins like having point loads. Let's discuss this in a separate lesson. Next lesson we are going to discuss about that. This is the part one of the design of strip protein. Thank you very much for watching our videos. Please subscribe to our channel. Let's meet again.